Hi, it's dumpster diving time again, and if you're subscribed to my EEV Blog 2 channel, you've no doubt seen this before. It's a 50-inch LG LCD uh, TV, less than two years old, and I found it in the dumpster, and ta-da! Here's why. Look, it's had a big impact mark there. It's uh, damaged the panel. We get some nice funky... Um, look at that. Almost looks like lightning. Or something like that. Anyway, um, they're very cool. They're artistic in their own right. Anyway, unfortunately, that is beyond economical repair. BER, you'd have to replace the entire uh, panel. So I thought we'd uh, take it apart, see if we can actually use the uh, LED backlight out of this thing for, I don't know, something, a big LED light panel or something like that. Take the LCD glass out and maybe use it as a big light panel. It's worth a shot anyway, and we might have some other usable parts in there. I don't know. Could be interesting. Let's go. It's a 50 LB 5610 for those playing along at home. So let's give this a burl, shall we? There's a few screws in here, and uh, no, I don't have my cordless screwdriver. It's uh, at the bunker, so meh, whatever. Um, a lot of people will complain. Yeah, I should get another one. And just something therapeutic about taking out screws. These are rather short ones, actually. Now, of course, we've seen inside many uh, TVs. This one, it won't be. Um, this will be pretty unexciting. Uh, plasmas are more exciting. I might link in uh, videos to my plasma teardowns. They're much more exciting because high voltage, high power drivers. You know, take like 500 watts. These things take bugger all. Or a 50 inch one like this might take 100, maybe. But um, yeah, there's no high voltage driver stuff. It's just the LCD panel uh, with the chip on flex drivers in it. And uh, what else have we got? We've got, um, well, there's gonna be a power supply, of course, that'll be a typical single-sided thing. There'll be a LED driver, because this is a LED backlight, is to see if we can uh, convert this maybe into like a, a, a white light panel. You could use it for uh, like a light box, for example, like old school light box, good for seeing through printed circuit boards and stuff like that, or, or any arts and crafty stuff that you happen to do uh, that needs a, a light table. Have I missed one? No, there we go. We're in like Flynn. Beauty. BVO. What does BVO mean? I don't know. Anyway, as you can see, there's bugger all in here. I'll give you a closer look. Now you'll have to forgive the lighting in this video. I don't normally shoot from this side of the bench, but yeah, the other benches, I don't want to have to clear them off. Anyway, this one was clean. So uh, the light's coming in from this direction here. That's why everything looks dark and shadowy and stuff like that. Whereas usually my videos are lit from like behind like this, like uh, above and behind like this. And that's what makes them look uh, so good. Anyway, we have our, uh, our speaker um, boxes here. There are our little speakers in there and they're just using those for some bass boost. Um, they, they would be sort of strategically designed. It is an LG, so it's, you know, life's good, right? And <laughs> anyway, um, as I said, a tiny digital board like this bugger all, and uh, the uh, main power supply like this, and Bob's your uncle. Here's the two main boards up close. Look at this uh, very low profile uh, switching transformer in here. I like that, that's pretty funky. Anyway, um, nice big uh, bridge rectifier on its own little uh, heatsink there. And uh, there's our main filter cap, what's that? And that looks like a Samyang brand, but look, um, Surge Protect, rather interesting. I. I don't know, do they have something in them? I would like to actually rip that out and have a tear down of that. But look, they've got eyelets in here. Look at that, that is interesting. The fuse here and the main capacitor, do they just lift out? No, that was a bit of a red herring. I can't, uh, I can't seem to lift that out. I've got a screwdriver under there, tried to lift it, didn't want to break it, but it didn't seem to budge. Anyway, where is it? also got it on this fuse over here too. Wow, eyelets. Anyway, apart from our main logic board, our power supply, and almost certainly our lead driver board as well, uh, we've got our T-Con board. That's where I've done a video uh, debugging that. You get I where I had an intermittent fault in the cable that went to uh, the T-Con board on a uh, LCD uh, TV. Anyway, common fault, the uh, T-Con boards, but from this power supply uh, here, 
going over to the main logic board, it doesn't split off anywhere else, so that it'd have multiple layers, 12 volts, 3.3, 5, all that sort of jazz. Um, and this one going off here, which must be going to the LED backlight, LED backlight driver around here. And on the back of the panel here, we've got uh, an info tag from New Optics Limited. They're actually a Korean company who specialise in uh, backlight uh, technology for LCD TV. So they're the ones doing this, the NC500. And those wires are the LED driver because it says LED there. <clears throat> oh. As if it was, wasn't bleedingly obvious anyway. Together and rip out the electronics because we don't need that. We only need this main power supply of the lead driver. Presumably the power supply will still work with the uh, uh, load disconnected for um, all that. But you could leave it running if you really wanted to. It's just pissing away some more power. Before we take it apart, what I've got set up now is my um, AIM TTI eye prober there with the... Uh, wire clamp wire attachment just over uh, one of the leads looks like there's two lead outputs presumably one on uh, either side would be my guess so there's the little um, doodad that comes with it very handy little device the eye prober i've done some uh, stuff on that before let's plug it in and i just want to see if it's a uh, constant current drive or uh, pwm going to those leads just for curiosity's sake hey there we go look at that there we go, it is PWM and 120 hertz or thereabouts. And if you want to know the current, what you've got to do is uh, set the probe to times one, because we're not using a times 10 probe, it's a direct output. Uh, read the data sheet for the thing and it tells you that it's uh, one volt per um, amp output. So if we have a look here, it's uh, volts peak to peak, uh, 200 and let's call it uh, 230 millivolts there. So uh, 230 milliamps. I took out the speaker and a nice touch. Look, little uh, rubber rings in here which uh, press into the chassis down here just for some uh, vibration isolation. So that's very nice. I don't know, you might salvage those speakers for something, maybe? Yeah. And I'd say we're going to want to keep our power button uh, on the base of the thing down here to switch it off and on. Because then, uh, like standby on this thing, I don't know, it might be, you know, half a watt if it's a good design or something like that. And here's our T-Con board, so we definitely want to get that out. In fact, you could probably maybe resell that on eBay. I don't know, <laughs> you might get 10 bucks for it. Maybe someone wants a uh, T-Con board. Don't forget the uh, to include the ribbon cables with it as well. And... We can get these panels off here. Here's the one of the driver boards for the, uh, or the, well, it's not really a driver board. The, uh, the chips themselves are actually, as I said, chip on uh, flex, going to be further inside the panel, but that's a, um, that's one of the connecting boards. So we just, there's two of those. Uh, they don't make it like an entire meter long like that because well it's just too hard split them into halves like that much easier to manufacture on you know most pick and place machines and and pcb panels and stuff like that these little white plastic clips here i think these are going to be part of the white uh reflective uh back in surface which we need to keep and it does help if you get all the screws oh okay so i'm going to take the bezel off because that's real easy that's a that is a metal bezel. You can see the glass panel down in here like that. I can actually lift it up. And, uh, but we're gonna have to get off this white tape because that is holding down, ta-da, one of our drivers. There we go, that's actually a chippy. Now, it looks for all the world like our panel is just gonna lift off, look at that. What a Bobby Dazzler. And careful, because we've got the boards attached. Ta-da! It's off, and look what we're left with. A beautiful white uh, light panel. It's gorgeous, isn't it? And there's our panel. Check it out, it's still, it's got the crack in there, but it's not, I mean, no, no, it's still protected, because this has a laminate film on the outside, but yeah, I wouldn't go trying to snap it or anything like that. You could be in serious trouble, but uh, yep, we can safely remove that. No wackers. And one of the first problems I've noticed is that uh, you're not gonna wanna use this as like a ceiling panel, because it does, I'm not sure if you can see that, but it is going to bow. It's just flapping around in the breeze there. Um, it's probably just being supported on the edges and its own weight will uh, make it come down. So really vertical uh, panel, or 
flat for working on big stuff. So I didn't have to disconnect those like I thought. Anyway, I plugged the lead back in. I'm gonna disconnect the processor board because we don't want that. That's just pissing away power. Um, I'm gonna plug it in and um, see if she works. All right, let's turn it on, see what happens. Yes, I am bare feet in the lab. All right, I've got uh, fixed exposure on the camera, so let's give it a bell. Ah. Wah, 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 wah. Let's try that again with the processor board uh, plugged in this time. And ta-da, look at that. Beautiful, it's not very white. To my, I'm not sure what that's showing up like on camera, but uh, to my mind, that's not very, oy, that, that dimmed a bit, didn't it? Was that my imagination? I'm not sure if you'll see that on camera, but yeah, you've got to have the processor board plugged in, otherwise it doesn't, uh, presumably that's when the 120 hertz is generated from, and, uh, or, you know, something that enables it. So yeah, you've got to have the processor on, but there, there you go, we've got ourselves a LED panel, beauty. And that's a nice even light on that too. I mean, you, offhand, I can't tell you where the uh, LEDs are on that thing. The sides, the top, all around. What's it? Like there's no real hot spots on that at all. Amazing. And trigger warning, if you don't like fast flicker turned off now, I'm gonna change the frame rate of the camera. And that's one two thousandth of a second. <laughs> Oops. But of course, if I set it to 120 hertz, it synchronizes precisely with the LED backlight, zero flicker whatsoever. But above and below that, yep, we can get the flicker. And if you're wondering what kind of light output we're getting at, well, at one meter away, that's about a meter, center axis, we're getting about, let's call it, oh, 550, 550 lux or thereabouts. And we'll just compare the light output to the uh, panels you've seen in my videos before. I've got these up as my uh, studio lights on the ceiling. This is a high efficiency uh, 60 watt, 600, uh, uh, 6,000 Kelvin uh, panel. So we'll get the difference. And at a meter, this one's rocking about 1200. So let's, let's call it double. And sure enough, my 60 watt nominal panel draws just over 60 watts, 63 watts. And if you wanna see the VA, there we go, 65.3, power factor 0.969. Very good, these panels, or well, the power supply that comes with it. Which for those playing along at home is a Lifford. And our dodgy brother's hacked TV LED panel, uh, 40 watts, almost bang on. Uh, VA, 50.92, so that gives us a power factor of uh, 0.8 for this particular LG. Uh, 50 inch LCD TV that we've got here. So that includes the electronics, uh, of course, so who knows how much power they're uh, still chewing and stuff like that. But yeah, um, that's not too shabby at all. Half the light output at a meter for, yeah, it's not half the power, um, but still it's, you know, it's, it's better than I thought it would be, I think. And if you do want to use this as a uh, light panel, then you want to get the weight down out of the thing. But unfortunately, most of the weight is in the steel uh, chassis. I have weighed the LCD panel itself, and it's only about two kilos. So that's all you're saving by taking out that. But you still need all the diffusion plate and the metal backing panel and the electronics and, yeah, the plastics and everything else. So you're not saving a huge amount of weight there. And of course, one of the good things you can use a light box for is for seeing through boards to see the different uh, layers. In this case, you can see the uh, ground planes in there really very nicely on that board. Look at that. Anyway, million and one uses for a light box. I mean, I don't know why you'd want a 50 inch diagonal uh, light box, but meh. anyway, you might. And because we can, let's have some fun with my Spectra 1 spectrometer. You haven't seen this uh, before, I've had it for a little bit, and I want to do some cool videos with it. And um, it's basically one of uh, one of the cheapest spectrometers um, on the market. It's not particularly cheap, it's like 800 euros or uh, something. But it's basically a fiber optic uh, interface, and there we, there we go. There's our fiber optic interface, but they give you like a little, nice little uh, lens with it as well that we can uh, put this directly on our panel and uh, have a look at the light spectrum from it. Awesome. This is the software that comes with it and it shows us the spectrum. If I point it up towards one of the lights, I've got 
here in the lab, we can see the color spectrum. It'll show you the peak response. And we can actually have a look at the monitor here and watch this. I'll show you something cool. Okay, so if we point it to the white, we can get green and some blue and some yellow down in there. If we just look at the blue, bingo, the others vanish. And if we just look at the green, <laughs> the others vanish as well. Neat. All right, now let's take a look at our uh, commercial panel just as a reference. Now, I'm not kidding when I have to put this all the way across the room and it's still peaking, unfortunately. Haven't totally figured out this um, software yet, but I believe that uh, this is as high as it goes. So yeah, we are saturated. But anyway, you can see the spectrum with the blue, the green, and the yellow peaks there. That's very typical of a white lead. I want to actually do a separate uh, video on this so we can actually um, get a uh, capture like, we'll just get a single shot sequence of that. There we go. That one's not bad, actually. Spot on. So that's our reference. And this is a nominal uh, 6,000 Kelvin panel, CRI greater than 80. You can see our uh, our blue peak there at uh, 450 nanometers, another one at 532 in the green, and uh, peaking around 600 in the yellow there. Now, if we have a look at our Dodgy Brothers panel here, I'll uh, capture that. Here we go, stop, take single shot capture, and whammo, the color rendering index isn't nearly as good on this thing as uh, our other commercial panel. And I, don't, I guess you wouldn't really expect it to, and it's, it does have kind of the yeah, a bluey tinge. So anyway, let's try and get the two side by side and compare them. Okay, I'll have a play around with our Dodgy Brothers panel and I'll see if I can, I'll spare the details, but I'll see if I can capture uh, the same amplitude. You can see uh, similar response, but yeah, the uh, peaks and troughs are different. And here we go, after a bit of fiddling, I was able to capture um, almost the same intensity. The other one was about 135 uh, peak in the blue. This one's, uh, uh, let's call it very similar. Now, I don't want to get into a tutorial on CRI or color rendering index here, but have a look. On the uh, left-hand side here, we've got our uh, TV, our hacked TV LED backlight, and on the right, we've got our uh, commercial panel. Not a really top quality one as far as uh, CRI uh, goes, just uh, greater than 80. As a reference, 100 is like, uh, like proper daylight, the sun. But you can see that even with the same intensity, virtually the same intensity scale here, you can see see that uh, the blue of the Hector TV is very prominent and it dips all the way practically down to zero between the blue and the green, whereas our commercial uh, LED panel at uh, a nominal 6,000 uh, Kelvin has a lot more energy content there between the blue and the green. That's why our hacked TV looks very bluish because it the blue, the energy in the blue there dominates. It's not spread out. It's not more of a full spectrum. And here's a spectrum uh, comparison of uh, daylight, for example, and see it's got a broad energy content right over the whole thing. And that's why, yeah, it doesn't look like it's a nice white. It looks very blue. Bluish, and you can get regular uh, compact fluorescence and things like that that do a similar thing. Now, if you haven't seen these films before, there's actually a lot of uh, technology which goes into these. You can see there's four separate layers here. On the bottom, we have a diffuser sheet. It's like really thick. But then we get onto these films, and these are absolutely fascinating. And check it out, even at one milliamp, um, these things light up okay. And if I change it, I can change that to 0.1 milliamps, so 100 microamps, and even 